Hi, Miss Bailey, is it? Yeah. Hi, my name's Dr Barnes. I'm one of the medical doctors. I've come to have a chat with you about your heartbeat and all these things that have left you in hospital the last few days. Yeah, I'm, I'm really confused. I've, it was awful. I, I was out walking and just, yeah, my heart was just beating heavily and I, I, I couldn't breathe. I, okay. It was really scary. Okay. Well, what I'd like to do is talk very briefly about your, your general medical health talk about why this has happened and talk about where we're going to go from here and hopefully prevent this from happening again okay yeah so are you normally fit and healthy yeah we really, really fit and healthy I, I walk I mm -hmm. play netball I go okay. to the gym have, have you ever suffered from this kind of thing before no never no. okay and is there anything like this that runs in your family that you know about uh, I had uh, an uncle he died of a heart attack okay. so I can't help but Worry of course, of course, more, yeah. but no particular problems with you know really fast heartbeat or anything. No, no. Okay. And I know that you've been in hospital a couple of days now, and you've had a few different treatments, and your yeah. heart slowed down. Yeah. Which, which is really good. Um, has anyone explained you know exactly what's caused all this? No. Okay. So what I'd like to do is go go through with that today, and yeah. then we'll we'll talk about where we're going to go forward from here. So what's caused this? is a condition called Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. So it's a, a long name, I know. Okay. Now, have you have you ever heard of it? Anything like that? No. Okay. So you've had a couple of different tests. I know you've had the echo scan of your heart, the ultrasound scan of your heart. Okay? Yeah. And that's normal. Oh. So your heart's beating normally. Okay. Which is which is you know, which is really good. Yeah, news. yeah, yeah. And that's common with Wolf Parkinson White. However, on the ECG, so the tracing of the electricity of your heart, it shows that the pathway, the electrical conduction is taken through your heart, is slightly abnormal. Okay? And that's what this condition is. And what it means is that, for the most part, your heart will just beat normally. Okay? However, at times, there is a risk that because the, the pathway, the electrical conduction is taken is slightly abnormal, it can suddenly start to beat very, very fast or in a completely uncontrolled manner. And then you can end up feeling like you did the other day. In fact, if you don't get control of it, it, it can even, particularly in people who are perhaps a bit older or, you know, once the heart starts to age a bit, it, it, it can even be life-threatening. So it's something that I think we need to try and get control of. So this is something that's that's always been there? Pro al almost certainly. Almost certainly this has been something that you've been born with. You know, I mean, and how how old are you now? I'm 23. It's, it's very common, you know, 23, even 33, even older. People will go through most of their life without ever having a problem, because the heart is just beating normally. Right. And then for some reason, and we often don't know exactly why, this abnormal pathway kind of comes into play and the heart starts beating in an uncontrolled manner. Okay. And as I say, well, as you know, that can make you feel really quite horrible. Yeah, yeah. And it can be really dangerous. And it's something that we need to try and investigate further and yeah. prevent happening again yeah i don't i, I it, it was awful i I, re, I really don't want it to happen again no i mean absolutely but and i it sounds like it sounds like it was pretty horrible for you yeah um, and, it, and i'm sort of i feel like from what you're telling me that it might happen again even though i feel fine now i mean it's, it's it sounds like you're normally fit and healthy as well yeah, and you've gone yeah. from being fit and healthy to having this horrible experience and there is a risk that it will happen again. I mean, you're only 23, so you've got a long life to live. And what, firstly, that means there's a lot of chance that it could happen again. And also, as you get older, you know, your body isn't necessarily as strong and as able to cope with it. Okay, So there is a risk that it can occur, reoccur. That said, there are some very good treatments that, could, that can basically cure it and prevent it from happening. Okay? Right. And I think what I'd like to do is refer you to one of the specialist cardiologists, okay? Yeah. Who will be able to deal, you know, deal with the condition. But what I'd like to, to do today is, apart from talking to you about the condition, which we've just done, is talk about the potential treatment options available. Okay? So just so you make sure you're well informed, and then when you see the cardiologist, which will be very soon, uh, you can make the right choice and hopefully prevent this from reoccurring and go on to sort of, you know, have a normal life without having any further problems. Does that yeah. sound okay? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I appreciate this is an awful lot of information for yeah. you to take on, and it's a bit out of the blue. As mm. you say, you know, you were completely well, and now you're in hospital. 
but there are treatment options available. And so, as I say, hopefully we can get it sorted. Right. Okay. Now, in terms of the different treatment options, there are really two options. One is, is medicine, okay, which mm -hmm. can basically calm the heart down. However, that would probably be medicine that you would need to take forever, which is, a, as I say, you're young, so it's a long time, mm -hmm. and all medicines come with side effects. Okay. The other option is what's called an ablation. Okay. And what that means is it's a very simple procedure. It's very safe. Um, we pop a very small wire into one of the blood vessels, either in the arm or the leg. Okay. You feed it up into the heart and you find the abnormal pathway where this abnormal electrical current is going and you just zap it off. And that's got over well, around a 90% cure rate. Okay. So you'd have it done and that would be it. It should just never come back. Okay, and that's often uh, for people who are having who have a slightly abnormal who have this abnormal ECG and are having symptoms and therefore are at risk of it recurring. And people who are young, like yourself, who mm -hmm. have got a long life to live, an ablation is often a very effective technique and the technique we would advise because it can, as I say, in the majority of cases, completely cure this and prevent it happening again. So that would mean it it won't happen again. So. As I say, the, the, the cure rate is around 90%. So there'd be a really good chance it would never happen again. Some people have to have a second ablation or a further one. But in general, the majority of people, like yourself, who have these slightly abnormal pathways of electricity, and it's not that uncommon, uh, the ma vast majority of people with an ablation will never have symptoms again. Okay? So, as I say, it's, it's quite an effective treatment. I mean, how does that sound generally? I mean, it sounds quite scary to think that I didn't even know I had a heart condition. Is it is it quite risky? So I think there's this several things to say. Firstly, and I know this is an awful lot of information to take on, and you're otherwise young and fit and healthy, and it sounds like you're feeling a lot better now, and it can be really difficult to kind of understand that. Secondly, you've obviously had symptoms from this condition before, or you've, you know, on this occasion. There is therefore a risk it can happen again. And as I say, if left uncontrolled, it can be life-threatening. So really the biggest risk here is us not getting control of this condition. Okay. Now the ablation, it's a, it's a simple procedure. You'd be awake, you pop some local anaesthetic in the skin so it's nice and numb, and feed a little wire in. Now there are some risks. Uh, the most common risk is you get a bit of a bruise where the wire goes in, Okay, and that will just resolve. Also you inject some chemicals into the blood to help visualise the heart better. And some people have a little bit of a reaction to them, so they get like, you know, a bit of a rash or something. Sometimes, you know, sort of mild allergic reaction, which will, which will go away with antihistamines. Right. There are risks, like any surgical procedure, you know, there are risks of, you know, there's a risk of death, there's a risk of stroke, but they are tiny risks, you know, much less than one in a thousand or so, okay? And even less so in people who are otherwise healthy, okay? In general, it's considered quite a routine and a very safe procedure, with a very good outcome rate, okay? And as I say, what I'd like to do is refer you to the specialist cardiologist who deals with these conditions, okay? Mm -hmm. Get them to assess you. And I think if they feel an ablation is indicated, I think that's something that would be a really good option for you because it is a pretty safe procedure. It was a very safe procedure with a very good outcome rate that will hopefully take you from being you know, healthy to worried about your heart to healthy again. But what 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 are the what's the worst case scenario? What could happen? So, with any procedure, ultimately, I mean, the worst case scenario with any procedure, you know, an ablation, whether you're having your appendix out, whether you're having a minor operation on your elbow, the, the work, there is a risk of death with all these things. Okay, that's the worst case scenario. But this is something. This is a procedure that we would class as, you know, ultra low risk, basically. Okay, mm -hmm. so it would go in line with these kind of routine operations that people have okay. and go home the same day. Okay, mm. I can't, I'm not going to lie to you. There's a risk with everything, but this is generally something that's considered low risk, particularly in someone who is generally fit and healthy anyway. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I think that would be something that's worth considering. The reason for for it, basically, as I say, is that the the condition itself, if left untreated, can be dangerous. Okay. Yeah. The procedure's got a good success rate, and the other thing is that the other option is to take tablets long term. I don't know how you feel about taking tablets long term in general. For young people, it's often not that attractive an option. But it, it, do you think the ablation 
is better than taking tablets? I think that the ablation is a more successful option, is more likely to be a successful option than taking tablets, okay? I think in someone who's young and has a long life to live, an ablation is better. You know, older people who perhaps may, may have slightly, you know, may not tolerate the ablation as well, or because they're already older, they're perhaps less likely to have recurrences of this, you know, this, uh, this uh, heart arrhythmia. You know, we might think about tablets, but for young, fit, young and fit people who would basically aim to get a cure, an ablation is better. The other thing with the tablets is it's a tablet called amiodarone. I know you've had a couple of doses of it here and it's got control of the heart. It is effective, yeah. but it has a lot of long-term problems. All right. If you take it for a few days, a few weeks, as you are, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But when you take it long term, you know it can have, it can cause problems with your breathing. It can cause problems with the thyroid gland. It can make the thyroid gland underactive, under or overactive. It can cause problems with the liver. It can cause skin rashes and problems with your eyes. It can. It's a really great drug, and if you're taking it for a short period, it's really good. Yeah. It's really effective. But if you're taking it for the next, you know, twenty three, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty years. In long-term doses, it does have side effects. An ablation would avoid, would hopefully avoid the need for long-term medical therapy, which firstly, in terms of lifestyle, is a bit easier because you don't have to remember to take tablets all the time. Mm -hmm. But also in a medication that has a lot of side effects, particularly when used for a long time, um, in, in general is a far more attractive option. I mean, I know that's, I've told you an awful lot of things today. Mm -hmm. I think... I mean, do you understand basically what I've told you is that the reason this irregular heartbeat has happened is because you've got your heart is conducting electricity in a slightly abnormal way. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a condition called Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome. It's not that uncommon, particularly in young people. Okay. It can make you feel very, very unwell, as you have on this case, on this occasion. Mm -hmm. It can, if left untreated, even be life threatening. Okay. Right. That said, there are treatment options to prevent it from happening again. There's long-term medical therapy, long-term tablets, which will probably work quite well, but does come with a lot of side effects, mm -hmm. particularly if you're going to be using them over the long term. And there's a what's, what's called an interventional therapy that in the vast majority of people can almost completely cure this condition. However, like anything, has risks, but it's generally considered a very low-risk procedure. I can give you some information leaflets about both options and about Wolf Parkinson White yeah, yeah. and arrange perhaps for you to see the specialist cardiologist, what's called the electrophysiologist, very soon and they can discuss further the different treatment options and how best to further investigate perhaps and manage this condition, okay? Yeah. And then you can go forward with them and hopefully uh, you know, reach a solution where this isn't going to come back. I mean, does that... Yeah, Did you feel yeah. a bit more informed about kind of what's yeah, going on? I, I, the main thing is I just I don't want this to happen okay. again. And if so, if whoever you're gonna refer me to thinks that the ablation mm. is is the the best thing to do, then from what you're telling mm. me, it, it sounds like you know it is. As I say, you, I'm not trying to make you force you to make a decision at the moment. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that you understand what's going on and give you all the information you need, okay? You can think about it. Right. And then we can arrange for you to see a specialist and then they can give you the specific advice, perhaps after you've had a few more tests on how we best go forward from here mm -hmm. and prevent this happening again and, you know, you can go and have a long and healthy life. Yeah. Does that all make sense? Yeah, yeah. You've... If, if you've got any questions you'd like to ask me or, in, or anything else that's bothering you? Um, no, no, I think, I think you've... You've made it sort of more or less clear for okay. me. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's okay. fine. Well, that's great. As I say, I'll, I'll organise that information for you, and we'll get that referral done. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot.